Remember SimCity 2000, Max's classic PC game released in 1994? Remember how you could bet on horse races and go out for a night on the town in the dating minigame? Yeah, me neither. In 1997, Japanese companies Genki and Imagineer partnered to produce an N64 port of Max's 1994 PC title. The port was released exclusively in Japan. As in most SimCities, you're the mayor of a city. You zone residential, commercial, and industrial areas, and watch as your city transforms from bare landscape to teeming metropolis. To keep your residents happy and tax revenues high, you have to build efficient infrastructure and public services like police and fire stations. The possibilities are limitless. You can build anything from a dense, Manhattan-style city made exclusively of high-rent skyscrapers to a flat, midwestern town of open fields and white picket fences. You could even create a futuristic hellscape of industrial rot. To port the game to a console, the developers made significant sacrifices. The controller poorly replaces a mouse and keyboard. Placing structures requires a great deal of precision. Even shifting the camera across the map is inelegantly choppy. Every move feels constrained by the system, and the gameplay suffers for it. The company porting SimCity to the N64 saw the game and decided that it just wasn't Japanese enough. So, they decided to spice things up with changes you won't find in any other version of the game. Some localization changes are small, like a television rather than a newspaper delivering news. The most drastic change is the insertion of a story into a game that wasn't intended to have one. The Japanese developers decided SimCity needed a story, and threw together some weird-looking 3D-rendered cutscenes to add background. In Chapter 2, your city launches a space colony and morphs instantaneously from modern cityscape to a city of the future! Did the producers think Japanese gamers wouldn't play SimCity unless there was a story? Buried in the city simulation, and also poorly rendered, are a set of minigames meant to spice up the gameplay, as if SimCity needed something more than just building a city. After constructing a horse racing track, you can bet on races and win big. A word of caution, you are using city funds to bet on these races, something the law likes to call embezzlement. What kind of insane logic were the developers using? Maybe they were thinking, Mr. Mayor, the nuclear power plant is about to close, and we don't have enough money to build a new one. We could take out a loan at the federal rate of 5%, or you could go down to the racetrack and put the town treasury on the 10 to 1 odds. As you follow the storyline of space colonists migrating from your city to another planet, you can play Space Attack, a simple shoot 'em up where you take on alien spacecraft. Or you could not, since the minigame doesn't benefit your city at all. My favorite minigame is the dating sim. If you want to take a break from running the city, you can go on dates with one of four pretty ladies. Taking a page from the book of Girls Don't Play Video Games, there are no men to choose from. I guess the developers didn't think women were allowed to run cities, even virtual ones. Overall, the minigames add little to the core gameplay, and are unnecessary distractions from the whole city part of SimCity. SimCity 2000 for the N64 is the most bizarre port I have ever played. The developers thought they could add more to the game by inserting bland looking 3D renders into an already fine looking 2D game. The additional minigames aren't worth playing and don't seem to have any consequences or relevance to your game. If you're going to play SimCity 2000, play the PC version. Otherwise, stay away from this one. Everything said and done, I'm gonna give SimCity 2000 for the N64 11 launch arcos. That's it for the video. Uh, drop me a comment, tell me how I'm doing, tell me if there's anything you wanna see. Thanks for watching and mahalo.